Sarvan Desai, Dr. Anand Kumar Pandey from ABEX Engineering College. I am going to discuss in this lecture priority CPU scheduling algorithm. Let's see what is priority CPU scheduling algorithm. Introduction, basics of priority CPU scheduling algorithms and types of priority CPU scheduling algorithm advantages and disadvantages of priority CPU scheduling algorithm. Then we conclude this lecture at the end. So priority CPU scheduling algorithm is a method of scheduling process based on their priority. It ensures that critical process receive more CPU time rather than the process which is not critical or not important, improving system performance and responsiveness for high priority tasks. What is priority CPU scheduling algorithm? This is a method where each process is assigned a priority. The CPU is allocated to the process with the highest priority. Priority can be determined by various factors such as process type, resource requirements, or usual defined criteria. There are two types of priority CPU scheduling algorithm. First is preemptive priority CPU scheduling algorithm, and second one is non-preemptive priority CPU scheduling algorithm. What do you mean by preemptive and non-preemptive? The CPU can be taken away from a running process if a higher priority process arrives. This is preemption. Means a uh, process will preempt before its complete execution. It will be out from the CPU. Non-preemptive means once a, C once a process gets the CPU, it will relieve the CPU only on its complete execution. Means once the CPU is assigned to a process, it cannot be preempted until it completes or moves to a waiting state. What are the advantages of priority CPU scheduling algorithm? These are like prioritize important tasks first, improving responsiveness for critical applications, can be optimized for specific requirements by adjusting priority criteria, and just a disadvantage of priority is that the low priority process, the priority which has least priority or low priority may never get executed. They will go in starvation. This is the disadvantage of priority CPU scheduling algorithm. Now, let us see how the processes uh, will get executed in this scene. Uh, with this algorithm, which is priority CPU scheduling algorithm. So for example, I will take some process here. Process. And their bust time. Insert BT and their priority. Here we did not, uh, we uh, do not take uh, arrival time because we want to do it, uh, 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 follow this equation using non-preemptive method. So there is no requirement you can take, you also cannot take, no matter, P1, P2, P3, suppose there are three processes. Having the bus time 10, 5, and 25. Priority can be assigned like uh, 1, 3, and 2. Here the highest number reflect the highest priority. Means 3 have the highest priority, or 1 have the least priority. In this case, now mention highest number reflect the highest value.
So prepare a Gantt chart for these boxes. Now in priority CPU scheduling algorithm, the base is the priority. So when arrival time is not given, we assume that all the processes are available at the time zero when we are going to system is going to execute the process. So availability is this. All three processes are available. So we decide sequence of execution on the basis of their priority. So here first P2 will get executed, then P3 will get executed, then at the last P1 will get executed. Because highest number reflects the highest priority I mentioned. When it is not mentioned, then you can take one as the highest priority and three is as the uh, last least priority. So uh, here, as I mentioned, highest number reflects the highest priority. So three is the highest. So P2 will get executed first, then P3 will get executed, and at the last, P1 get executed. Three, two, one. So we start from zero in sequence. First process is P2, then P2 will get executed. Zero to what is the worst time of P2? Worst time of P2 is five to zero to five. Then what is the uh, second highest priority? That is of P3. So P3 will get executed here. What is the bus time of P3? That is 25. So total time will be 25 plus 530. P3 will uh, get executed. And now we have the priority with, uh, we have the process with least priority, which is P1. So now we will execute P1 with first time 10. So 30 plus 10 will be 40. Now we prepare the again chart. So the normal asking, common asking is average waiting time and average turnaround time. So okay. we are right P1, P2, P3. Exit time of every box is minus TAT. Exit time minus arrival time TAT. Then we find out WT. WT will be TAT total time minus their bust time. So exit time. For P1, H40, P2, 5, for P3, this is 30. TAT will be exit time minus arrival time because here arrival time is not mentioned. So uh, there is assumption that all boxes are available at uh, time 0. So TAT will remain same, 40, 5, 30. What will be the waiting time? Waiting time will be TAT minus first time. So 40 minus P1 ke liye ke P1 ka first time, 10 equals to 30. P2, 4, P2, 5 minus, sorry. TAT is 5, 5 minus, uh, first time is 5, it will be 0, and TAT 30 minus, first time of P3, P3 is 25, five. So we can see here, the waiting time for P1 is 30, waiting time for P2 is 0, and for P3 it is 5. Now, if we want to find average waiting time, then summation of
waiting time for all process and divide by number of process. So this will be 35 divided by 3. 11.1. This will be average average waiting time. And this is non preemptive priority. You can see here if P2 uh, take the CPU, it will release only on its complete execution. P3 also release the CPU on its complete execution and same for P1. Right. Now See another example for priority, which is preemptive. Again, take some process, process, their respective worst times, their respective arrival time, and their priorities. Suppose here is P1, P2, and P3 having the worst time again 10, 5, 25, and arrival time is 0, 5, 10, and priority is 1, 3, 2. Again, mention the highest number reflect. Highest number reflect the highest priority. Okay. So make a gain chart. Now at the time of zero, at zero time. What is the availability? There is only single process P1. So we have no option, no comparison, because there is only one process P1, so we run P1. CPU will check at a unit time interval uh, that whether, whether there is another process with the highest priority or not. Uh, but as we can see in numerical, the next arrival is on five unit time, so we run P1 for five minutes time. The remaining time, the remaining bus time of uh, P1 will be five. Now time is five, the availability in the system, in the ready queue is two process, P1 and P2. P1 and P2, now so two processes are uh, available for execution. Now, we have to check the priority for process. You can see here P1 has the one priority, and P2 has the three priority, which is the highest according to this. Highest number reflect highest priority. So we opt P2 as it is the it has the highest priority. So PM will be preempted, and P2 will get the CPU for its execution. So we run P2 for next five unit time 10 p2 also has the bus time only five units so p2 will get executed completely within five unit time so it will be zero p2 will get terminated now time is 10 units so availability is in the system two P1, which comes at time 0, and P3, which comes at uh, which came at uh, time 10. P2 will get executed, so it is terminated. So now there is P1 and P3, which have the highest priority 1 and 2. P3 has the highest priority, means it has the priority over the P1. So we will take P3. Now there is no next arrival, so we run P3 complete. So first time for P3 is 25, 
so we run it 25 that will that will be this will be uh, 35 10 plus 25 will be 35 and p3 will get executed then we again take p1 means resume p1 so remaining bus time is 5 so there will be 30 plus 30 plus 5 equal to 4 okay now all the process get executed Zero, zero. Now this is the now this is the uh, Gantt chart. Uh, asking is same average waiting time AWT. So for AWT we have to calculate individual waiting time for all process. So right here process. Exit time. CAT and WT. So process P1, P2, and P3. Exit time for P1 is 40. Exit time for P2 is 10. Exit time for P3 is 35. Okay. So, TAT will be exit time minus arrival time. 40 minus arrival time of P1 is 0. So, this will be 40. TAT for P2 will be exit time 10 minus arrival time of P2. Arrival time of P2 is 5. So, 10 minus 5 equals to 5. P2. For P3, arrival time is 10. So this will be 25. For waiting time, we have to minus first time of every process. So waiting time for P1 will be 40 minus first time of P1 is 10, 30. First time of P2 is 5, 5 minus 5, 0. For P3, first time is also 25. So 25 minus 25, 0. Here we can see the waiting time is 30 for P1 and 0 for P2 and P3. So what will be the average waiting time? Average waiting time will be AWT. AWT will be 30 divided by unit time. This is preemptive version. You can see here P1 is preempted and it will uh, gain the CPU after execution of P2 and P3 here. So this is the preemptive priority. Here are some references which I have used in my PPT. Thank you. Thank you all for being with me.